All right, so today we're gonna to be comparing two vehicles. Excuse the noise. We're gonna be looking at the 2021 Toyota Highlander and the 2021 Buick Avenir. And so we'll start with the Buick. Um, it looks pretty good. It looks stately, it looks luxurious. From the front, the headlights, I mean, honestly, this kind of looks like a JX60 from an Infiniti. If you put an Infiniti badge there, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. This one definitely looks wider and a little bit more bulbous than the Highlander that I'll show you in just a second, but it's it has some clean lines. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty safe design, and this looks a little bit bigger than the Highlander. So I'll just do a quick walk around. These are 20 inch wheels. I think that's a good size. The back of the vehicle looks nice. You know, you have your chrome accents on the exhaust. So it definitely looks modern, luxurious. It doesn't look cheap at all. Almost looks kind of like a minivan, but. So obviously you have keyless entry. I love this design. Um, yeah, I don't think they're doing too much on this vehicle. Buick never really does. So we'll hop in. You have your chocolate brown interior. I like the design of this. It's pretty safe, but it looks luxurious. You have both speakers in here. Um, you know, the radio's good. It's solid. Um, I like the layout. Um, you have heated, ventilated seats. But mainly I'm looking at the design because features and things can change with trims. Um, you have your start-stop here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a well-laid-out vehicle. I would like metal accents here, but I like the design of this door. These seats are comfortable. Um, I would like a little bit more bolstering, so they are a little bit more flat than I like, but I like the piping in them. I like that they're perforated leather. Um, in here, you know, you kind of have the semi-digital display, um which is cool this screen is not bad i don't need a massive 20 inch screen in this vehicle the controls are well laid out this shifter was pulled from like a bmw um you have all the charge ports you need you have wireless charging here your cup holders are here that's pretty straightforward um this is damped uh, i like how this is kind of curvy and then it kind of bows out a little bit but it doesn't intrude too much on interior space so and then your console is pretty straightforward. You have one here, which I like. And then you can take this out and put stuff down here. Yeah, I like the design of this SUV. Um, you know, this is soft touch. Everything's just very tastefully done. Um, you have a sunroof here, which is dope. Push up. And then that's a good size sunroof. And then you have one back here. So a lot of natural light. Um, just, you know, aesthetically, when you get in, if this was your vehicle, you would be proud of this. The doors are solid. I like that they have solid framing around them. That's a huge thing for me. And I know it's harder in cars, but I feel like in SUVs, they just try to make everything so slim and slender. It just doesn't even look robust. Um, and I've already pulled this seat back. Um, so I like these seats. They are too flat though. Um, I wish there was some, you know, more contouring. These are super flat. They are comfortable. Um, you have good controls back here. Again, I like the piping here. You have heated seats here, charge port here, like a regular charge port. So that's dope. And the doors open wide enough that it's easy for you to get in. And you can even climb back in through this tunnel, which is probably a bit more ideal. These seats, like the operation of moving them forward is like, you gotta put some force into it, which I don't like. I could sit back here I'll tell you, give you a little sneak peek for longer than I would in the Highlander for sure. Um, this seat, you know, it reclines a little bit better. It just feels like this SUV has a bit more room. It does feel a bit larger. You have cup holders back here, a charge port back here. Pretty straightforward. This is an automatic tailgate, which I forgot how to operate. But again, I like the design of the back of this vehicle. So um i will give you another heads up it has more space in back than that 2021 highlander because it does bow out a little bit in the back and on the sides 
the seats go down automatically. So that's cool. I like that. Super tight. And you have some storage down here, which is also dope. So overall, a good option. And this has a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter engine. It's really hard to mess that up. That's a pretty traditional engine. But we'll walk over here to the Highlander, which I think does look a bit better, a bit more youthful, but it does look smaller. So the front, you know, I like the grill here. This is obviously blacked out. So this trim is a little bit different from that one over there, but I like the accents in the mirror. I like the headlights. Um, I, I think those are just projector and not LED, but um, these wheels are, are nice. These are 18s, so I could do 19s or 20s on this, but the overall profile, it does have some more contouring here. And it does look a little bit more flat on the side. So I don't know where I, I fall with the design. I, I kind of slightly favor this vehicle's design better, but I know that it cuts into interior volume. So we'll start from the back. I think it looks good. It's in line with other modern Toyotas out. Um, this one does look a little bit more narrow. It feels like it sits a little bit lower. And just back here, you can tell it's a little bit more flat and you don't have the space that you have in the Buick. You also do not have uh, auto folding seats, but you know, you can put these back easily just by doing that and pushing them down. So that's not a big thing. I am not going to get into the back of this vehicle. I'm not gonna get in that back seat. I have done that already. The Buick doesn't look any better than this vehicle and this vehicle doesn't look any better than a Buick. I think it's all in your taste. Um, so this is less traditional looking. It's not like super edgy, but this back seat, I will say, it leans forward a little bit. It doesn't recline. It's not as comfortable. The seat is a little bit more elevated than the back of the Buick. There's just not as much room. Um, you do have cup holders back here. There's no charge port. So I, I could sit back here for probably 30, 45 minutes most. Um, I like these seats. Again, the styling's a little different. There's no piping, there's no perforated leather, but these are still nice. Um, you can adjust them. I just don't know how because there's a track here, but sitting in them, um, they have a little bit more bolstering than the Buick. And you know, this is a little bit different. So, and here's the styling up front. So again, a lot of this has to do with trim, but this is a little bit more youthful. Um, it does not have a secondary sunroof back here, which I'm sure is an option. It has a sunroof up here, but like looking at the doors, this vehicle definitely looks more Teutonic than the Buick. So this is more like a 35, you know, late 20s 40s type vehicle design um you know ease of operation is there toyota's not going to screw you over with that everything is up here which is a better design than the buick this is a little bit more traditional than the buick but you do have an electronic parking brake and snow and you know hill hole that kind of thing um you do have wireless charging here which is dope and then to get to the bottom of the cubby, you just do that. I mean, they could just redesign this and use the same display to not, to make it not look as cheap. Maybe round buttons, just this plastic, this piano black just makes it look cheap. But I like these vents. Um, they're pretty straightforward. It seems like air would come out relatively easy on those. The digital dash is electronic here. Um, and you have push button start. And, you know, the seats... You know, again, it's a wash. It's all in what you like. I do like these seats a little bit better as far as feel goes, but design-wise, not as much. Same thing with the doors and the overall interior. I like the design of the Buick better. This, you know, is a little cooler. This vehicle is a cooler vehicle. Um, it just doesn't have the room of the Buick. And so from a reliability standpoint, which one would I buy? 
Um, this has a three and a half liter V6. I would have to go with the Highlander if I was keeping it for a long time. I mean, Toyota's gonna hold up very, very well. But at the same time, Buick is probably GM's best division. Even going back to the 90s, Buicks were very reliable and very solid. So I don't think you can go wrong with either one. And honestly, actually, I'm gonna depart and say I would do the Buick. I mean, you have to live with the vehicle. And I think that Buick is just easier to live with. Maybe until you get like north of 150,000 miles.